ऊपर नौ ने रिस्पेक्टेड मैनेजर मैम प्रिंसिपल मैम वाइस प्रिंसिपल सर मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर सर टीचर एंड माय डियर फ्रेंड्स माय नेम इज सृष्टि एंड विद माय फेलो मेंबर्स कनिका आध्या लक्ष्य एंड मानस आर गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट अ वेबिनार ऑन वर्ल्ड बायोफ्यूल डे द वर्ल्ड बायोफ्यूल डे इज सेलिब्रेटेड एनुअली ऑन टेंथ ऑफ ऑगस्ट through this webinar we are trying to create awareness and promote the use of biofuel for better future world biofuel day history the world biofuel day was created in indian ministry by the ministry of petroleum and natural gas as india is a energy dependent country for crude oil for this bio what is biofuel Biofuel is a any fuel whose energy is derived from a process of biological carbon fixation. What is carbon fixation? A chemistry process that converts carbon dioxide into a hydrogen carbon molecule, which is a source of energy. If this process occurs in a living organism, then it is referred to as a biological carbon fixation. Now. Let's discuss about the some features of biofuel. It is also known as agrofuel. It is mainly derived from the biomass or bio waste. It is fuel can be used for many purposes, but the main use for they have to be brought is in the transportation sector. The most important feature of biomass is that they are renewable sources of energy, unlike other natural sources. like coal petroleum and even nuclear fuel history of biofuel the word biofuel day for the first time was observed in 10th of august 2015 and now we are celebrating its 8th edition in 2022 this day was created by the ministry of petroleum and natural gas this day also honors the great scientists Called Sir Rudolf Diesel, as on this day only in 1893, he efficiently ran the mechanical engine with peanut oil. So he was the first person to discover the biofuel. He also predicted that in future vegetable oil would replace the fossil fuels, and that is exactly what is happening today. So to commemorate this achievement, this day is celebrated on the this day. and you can guess by the name sir rudolf diesel only was the one who invented the diesel engine also he himself was a great scientist and thus this the owner him too now my friend kanika will going to tell you about the drone for biofuel thank you thank you shrishti now drone for biofuel today the use of biofuels has expanded throughout the globe some of the major producers and users of biogases are asia europe and america there are several factors that decide the balance between biofuel and fossil fuel use around the world those factors are cost availability and food supply there is only so much land fit for farming in the world and growing biofuels necessarily detracts from the process of growing food as the population grows our demands for both energy and food grow at this point we do not have enough land to grow both enough biofuel and enough food to meet the both needs now what is biomass as we all know biomass is dead organic matter examples of biomass are kernels of corn mats of algae and stalks of sugarcane and so many types of biomass there are two types of biomass woody biomass and non woody biomass examples of woody biomass are coconut oil palm poplar pine these are generally burned to heat space or heat water to produce steam to generate electricity via a turbine generator these are also called direct biomass non woody biomass examples of non woody biomass are corn sugarcane soybeans algae these are generally processed to produce different liquid biofuels and these are also called indirect biomass 
Now, there are several sources of biomass, as you can see in this picture, such as industrial effluents, sewage sludge, cattle manure, agricultural biomass, and municipal solid waste, and many more. Now, producing biofuel from biomass. We can also produce biofuel from biomass in two methods. Method one, sugar crops or starch are grown through the process of fermentation and ethanol is produced. Method second, plants are grown which naturally produce oil such as jetropha and algae. These oils are heated to reduce their viscosity after which they are directly used as fuel for diesel engines. This oil can be further treated to produce bio diesel which can be used for various purposes. Now my friend Adya would like to tell you about the classification of biofuel. Thank you Kanika. So my dear friends, I am going to tell you about classification of biofuel. Biofuel are classified into three generations. First generation of biofuel. First generation biofuels are also called conventional biofuel. They are made from things like sugar, starch, or vegetable oil. Note that these are all food products. Any biofuel from a feedstock that can be consumed as a human food is considered as a first generation biofuel. It is important to note that the structure of the biofuel itself does not change between generations, but rather the source from which the fuel is derived changes. First generation biofuel suffer from the same problem, including threatening the food chain, increasing carbon emissions when planted outside the traditional agriculture setting, and intense growth requirements. Ultimately, first generation biofuels have given way to second and third generation fuels, though they will continue to provide biofuel for the foreseeable future. Their importance is warning and new. Better alternatives are being developed. Here are some uses of second generation, first generation of biofuel, conventional approaches. Rape oil sunflower oil is converted into vegetable oil or easters by the process of transification and it is converted into vegetable oil easters or biodiesel. These biodiesel is mixed with gas oil. Beet sugar cane corn potatoes that is converted into starch, then sugar, then by the process of fermentation is converted into ethanol and then it is mixed with the gasoline. Second generation of biofuel. Second generation biofuel are produced from sustainable feedstock. The sustainability of a feedstock is defined by its availability, its impact on greenhouse gas emissions, its impact on land use, and by its potential to threaten the food supply. To qualify as a second generation, a feedstock must not be suitable for human consumption and should not grow on a marginal, that is non-agricultural land, should not require a great amount of water or fertilizer. Certain food products can become second generation fuel when they are no longer useful for consumption. For example, waste vegetable oil, Second generation beet stock. Organic vegetable oil, first generation beet stock. Second generation biofuels are also referred to as advanced biofuels. Now, my dear friends, here are some uses of second generation of biofuels. For example, of lignocellulose, like forest waste, corn stover, switchgrass, is converted into butanol or ethanol by fermentation and dilution. Examples of lipids like palm, soybeans is converted into jet fuel diesel by the process of hydro treating. Third generation of biofuels. Unofficial category reserved for biofuels derived from algae. Previously, algae were considered second generation biofuels. However, when it became apparent that algae are capable of much higher yields with no resources input than other feedstock, many suggested that they be moved to their own category. Algae-based biofuels require a unique production, mechanism, and potential of food. 
solutions to mitigate most of the drawbacks of first and second generation. Here you can see the uses of third generation of biofuels through the use of charred paper. First of all, our sun energy is, con is given to the algae. Algae are renewable resources. You know, we read it. Now, these algae is, ex oil extra is used in the oil extraction in the biodiesel production. These biodiesel production releases renewable fuel that is used in our, your daily using cars, uh, which releases CO2, that is carbon dioxide. The potential of algae-based biofuel. No feedstock can match algae in terms of quantity or diversity. Algae produce an oil that can easily be refined into diesel or even certain components of gasoline. Algae can be genetically manipulated to produce everything from ethanol and butanol to even gasoline and diesel fuel directly. Butanol is of great interest because the alcohol is exceptionally similar to gasoline. In fact, it has a nearly identical energy, density to gasoline and an improved emission profile. Until the advent of genetically modified algae, scientists had a great deal of difficulty producing butanol. Outstanding yield. Algae have been used to produce up to 9,000 gallons of biofuel per acre, which is 10-fold what the best traditional feedstock have been able to generate. Pupils who work closely with algae have suggested that yields as high as 20,000 gallons per acre are attainable. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, yields that are 10 times higher than the second generation biofuels mean that uh, only 0.42% of the U.S. land area would be needed to generate enough biofuel to meet all the U.S. needs. My dear friends, now my friend Manas will tell you about the beneficial aspects and adverse aspects of biofuel. Thank you. Thank you, Agra. Beneficial aspects. Reduce gases and particular emissions, minimal sulfur content, higher CTA number and flash point, higher density, improved lubricity, biodegradable and low toxicity, increase, reduce energy content, increase the fuel consumption, increase nitrogen oxide, poor root temperature, poor oxidation, incompatibility with certain natural joiners, more rapid lubricating oil degradation, degradation during long term storage. Sustaining biodiversity. There is one last problem presented by biofuels that need to be addressed. Biodiversity. Biodiversity refers to the variety of different living things in an environment. For instance, if you grow only sweet corn in a field, you have low biodiversity. If, however, you grow sweet corn, dent corn, flint corn, floor corn, and popcorn, then you have high biodiversity. Why should we care? Growing a single type of corn is easier for producing biofuels. Because we can select that type of field, the best crop of dirt is easiest to grow and which requires the least amount of water and other resources. This sounds great, but then downside to this is that pests that eat this type of corn will begin to proliferate. What is worse, if we spray with pesticides to kill these pests, some will inevitably be resistant to these pesticides. Over time, the pests will grow in number and will be left with pests that are resistant chemical defenses. In end, we have bigger problem that we started and probably no corn because the super pests ate it all. Biodiversity is important to ensuring that pests do not grow out of control. The type of farming need to be produced large quantity of biofuels is generally not amendable to high levels of biodiversity. This presents a fundamental problem in, in producing biofuels that is enhanced by the fact that super pests produced in the effort to grow biofuels can also threaten the food crops. Land use and biofuel. The amount of land required to meet the world's energy needs using biofuels is a major concern. Depending on the feedstock, the requirement can be massive. The following numbers reflect the amount of land that would be needed to meet the requirements of just global aviation industry. Jatrofa would need to be planted with 2.7 million square kilometers 
that is an area roughly about one third the size of uh, Australia. Camelina would require an area of two million square kilometers. LA would be 68,000 square kilometers to meet the needs of the aviation industry. That is an area roughly about also the all Ireland. The aviation industry accounts only for 13% of all food consumption. So the values above the would need to be increased tenfold, cover all of Russia and United States, and should need a little more room. Algae would require an area of 6 like 80,000 square kilometers or all France plus some. There is not enough land currently in use to meet fuel needs. This means the forest area should be cleared. This would impact of by fuels of greenhouse gas emissions were originally measured by considering only direct land use changes. When negative indirect use changes were considered, the greenhouse gas savings from biofuels increased as follows. Note that corn ethanol euro from minus 20% to 93%, cellulose ethanol euro from minus 70% to 50%. Now, I would like to pass Lakshya for topic air and water concerns with biofuel. Thank you, Manas. So, friends, now we study about air and water concerns with biofuel. Biofuels burn cleaner than fossil fuels, resulting in fewer tailpipe emissions of greenhouse gases. In particular, emissions and substances that cause acid rain, such as sulfur. Biofuel production use anywhere from two to 84 times as much water as fossil fuel production. Water used can be mitigated by planting crops that do not require irrigation. When the entire life cycle of a biofuel is considered, it may actually generate more greenhouse gases than fossil fuels. Then the range is provided for biofuel reserve for the location in which feedstock is grown. For instance, sugarcane grown in Brazil has far less impact than sugarcane grown in South Africa. Biodiesel is sulfur free but it contains nitrates that contribute to acid rain, which is so harmful for us. Biodiesel has fewer polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which have been linked to cancer. This is a flowchart of the life cycle of the biofuel. So friends, now we'll study about carbon equations. Can we overcome the problem of biofuels contributing to global warming? So, do you know the answer, friends? The answer, surprisingly, is yes. It is true that biofuels produce carbon dioxide, which is a potent greenhouse gas and one most often blamed for global warming. However, it is also true that growing plants consume carbon dioxide. Thus, the equation becomes a simple balancing act. If the plants we grow utilize the same amount of carbon dioxide that we produce, then we will have a net increase of zero and no global warming. How realistic is this view? It may seem like a simple matter to only produce as much carbon dioxide as plants use. After all, couldn't we only burn biofuels and thus keep the equations balanced? Well, the math actually doesn't quite add up. Research has shown that energy must be invested into producing crops and converting them into biofuels before any energy is obtained. A 2005 study from Cornell University found that producing ethanol from corn uses almost 30% more energy than it produced. In other words, you can't produce a perpetual motion machine using biofuels because you lose the energy, you invest in creating them in the first place. In fact, you can't even break them. What are the prospects of biofuel? A decade ago, subsidies for biofuel growth and development in many countries, especially in the US, were high. However, better understanding of global warming increased awareness of the fragility of the food supply and a general trend toward greener alternatives have all led to a decline in the popularity of biofuels. In 2011, the US Senate voted 73 to 27 to end tax credits and trade protections for corn-based ethanol production. 
As the second largest producer of ethanol, this is a substantial move that reflects the changing pressures on our energy needs and shifted focus to environmentally friendly energy sources. Now, we will see a video which will help us to understand this topic better. Biofuels Biofuels are combustible fuels created from biomass. The term biofuel is usually used to describe liquid fuels such as ethanol and biodiesel that are used as replacements for transportation fuels like gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. Ethanol is an alcohol formed by fermentation. It is used as a replacement for or additive to gasoline. Biodiesel is an oil produced by extracting naturally occurring oils from plants and seeds. Biodiesel can be combusted in diesel engines or blended with diesel fuel. Biofuels are grouped in three categories based on the type of feedstock used to produce them. First generation biofuels are produced from food crops. For ethanol, feedstocks include sugarcane, corn, maize, and others. For biodiesel, feedstocks are naturally occurring vegetable oils, such as soybean and canola. Second generation biofuels are produced from cellulosic material, such as wood, grasses, and inedible parts of plants. This material is more difficult to break down through fermentation and therefore requires pretreatment before it can be processed. Third generation biofuels are produced using the lipid production from algae. In addition, the term advanced biofuels is used to describe the relatively new technological field of biofuel production that uses waste such as garbage, animal fats, and spent cooking oil to produce liquid fuels. Biofuels are currently the only viable replacement to petroleum transportation fuels because they can be used in existing combustion engines. This is an increasingly important advantage with growing concern about the environmental impacts of fossil fuels around the globe. Biofuels can also help provide energy security in regions that do not have hydrocarbon resources but do have suitable agricultural conditions. While there is some dispute over just how renewable biofuels are, it is generally accepted that the crops used to produce them can be replenished much faster than fossil fuels, which take millions of years to form. Concerns about biofuels are usually centered around the fact that they are an agricultural product. Producing these biofuel crops can mean competition with other natural resources, particularly land, food, and water. First-generation biofuels use only edible crops, which has led to biofuel crops displacing food sources in certain regions and subsequent spikes in food prices. In many regions of the world, subsidies are provided for these crops, which only amplifies these issues. In addition, increased agriculture of any form comes with concerns of deforestation and biodiversity loss, as well as water and fertilizer use, which have environmental and climate impacts all to their own. That's biofuels.